You are getting fixed before the intro to this video. Nice. Nice. This video is proudly supported by my friends at Rock Auto. More on that a little later on in the video, but welcome, welcome back to Legit Streetcars. In this video, we are fixing many things on this, my 2002 True Blue Metallic Ford F-150 SVT Lightning. I think I said that all in the right order. And this is about as legit of a street car or street truck, my only truck, as it comes. I've been using it for about a thousand miles without fixing really anything. If you guys saw the reveal video, it's got quite a few issues, a lot of it's maintenance, but some of them, some of them really need to get fixed. Hang on, let me show you another one. Besides this really annoying squeak, which I should have fixed a long time ago. Hear that? That is a bad shot. Okay, that is the hood. That's the hood shutting. <laughs> I didn't think those shocks were that weak. So that's the hood shutting. These are bad shocks, one bad shock in the rear. So in this video, I'm gonna take you problem by problem. I'll show you the issue, we'll fix the issue, and then I'll show you that it's fixed. It's a crazy concept, but I think you guys are gonna like it. So if you do, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get right to work. Okay, our first very visible issue would be the coolant on this truck. So the engine's pretty cool, but we're gonna have a little tiny bit of pressure left. Don't ever open one of these with a hot engine. Very, very dangerous. It'll blow up in your face and burn ya. Um, and you don't wanna get burned by any coolant, but especially coolant that looks like this. This is just nasty. So the maintenance on this truck is just a little baffling because the truck itself, the body, the undercarriage, everything is very, very nice, especially for one that's been around Chicago its entire life. I know it's got new spark plugs, it's got coils. We did the oil change last time and everything looks just really clean, but it's as if they never did a coolant flush. They never did a brake flush. It's very, very odd, but uh, it is what it is. So we want to flush this all out and this is going to get a little extreme. So I've already run a bottle of radiator flush through this and I've driven it a couple hundred miles with this. So at this point, we're going to drain this, fill it up again, and flush it multiple times, and I may even replace this reservoir because I don't know if we'll ever get it clean, and it just, it makes such a nice truck look bad. And we already completed the first step. You gotta remove your cap, otherwise you're gonna drain very, very little out. So with that, let's raise this truck in the air and see what kind of drain we're dealing with. Okay, so here is our drain, and I'm just gonna reach in here and start turning this guy. Ugh, there we go, nasty. Okay, so. I know what you guys are thinking. Alex, you have a shop now. Where are your big shop drains? Well, they're on back order. I ordered some nice ones and they're on back order. And so I just went to AutoZone and bought this guy here. I tried going to Harbor Freight, but their cheapo drains were on a shelf that they couldn't reach because something was in front of it. I don't know, it was weird. Kind of got into a little bit of an argument. They wouldn't sell me the floor model. It's against company policy. <sighs> anyway, so here we are. $30 for this guy right here so I can drain some coolant. But yeah, as you can tell, this stuff is uh, pretty dirty, pretty dirty. But we're gonna get all of this out of here and then we're gonna refill it again and get it out of here again. And I'm hoping that two flushes uh, with the cleaner will be enough. Well, if there's one thing that's nice about draining the coolant on the ground like that, it's that we can get started on taking things apart up top because I wanna replace the thermostat. I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's the original thermostat. The truck doesn't overheat or anything, but for a few dollars, it's a good thing to replace and it's probably nasty considering how bad the coolant is. And also, we're gonna flush it with an open thermostat so we know we're getting maximum flow. Okay, goodbye cheap version of a cold air intake. Yeah, that big cone filter is definitely more of a hot air intake. It just kind of sits here. The exhaust manifold is right there, so it's just sucking in hot air. It does make the blower sound cooler, but I do believe they sell a real cold air intake that either blocks this off or it's enclosed in a box and then it gets its cold air from down below somewhere. Either way, for now, I think I'm okay. I'm pretty happy with the performance of this truck at the moment. I'm not going too crazy. And speaking of that, there is an Excel coil that a lot of people have told me are garbage. Uh, this thing runs great though, so I'm gonna leave them for now. And here is our thermostat. So let's get this clamp off here. It looks like we have a bracket we need to remove as well. Can't wait to see how nasty this is. 
This is something else I'm talking about with this truck being kind of weirdly maintained. I mean, I guess it's not that weird. It just seems like they spent their money on performance. This thing has a pulley, a nice throttle body, some exhaust work, a tune, coils, maybe injectors. This is the coolant for the intercooler system and it's like brand new. Now, granted, this won't get nearly as dirty as the coolant that runs through the engine, but uh, anyway, I think this guy was just into going fast and that's about it. This blower belt's not bad but uh, I got a new one anyway. It's a little dry rotted. We don't want any slip, so we'll just get this out of the way now. Okay, and that'll make it easier for us to get this upper radiator hose out of the way. Ooh, yeah. There is a lot of orange stuff in there. Not good. are a little crusty not breaking though so far knock on thermostat housing please don't break okay that one wasn't bad at all weird okay moment of truth here on this thermostat get my housing off wow these are the longest housing bolts in the world look at that nasty though oh man this is brutal Ooh. Go. There's our seal. Well, it's definitely orange, but it's not as bad as I thought. It wasn't overheating. This thing seems to be working okay. But here you go. Here's our old thermostat, and I'm going to try and put this back together without it so we can run this fully open. Just look at these bolts. Look at all this crud. We got to get this off. Okay. Just going to go old school here with the wire brush. I have to bring over my bench grinder with the wire wheel on there or just get a new one for the shop and leave the one at the house. Something else that I need to bring over. A lot of stuff I bring over with this pickup truck, so we gotta fix it up. Okay, so no thermostat. Just gonna go ahead and install the seal and now the housing. Okay, snug these guys up. Now we're basically putting everything back together. I can leave that blower belt off though, that won't matter for this. And the clamp is on, there we go, nice and tight. And we'll just throw this back on because it has the mass airflow sensor, so it'll run properly. Some cars won't run at all without it. And for this flush, we're gonna run a second bottle of this cleaner. Right. And then we're just filling it up with normal water. And we're gonna fill this all the way up, get the radiator nice and full. So it might take a couple gallons, depending on what kind of car you're working on. This truck probably takes a lot. There goes one gallon. And there is gallon number two. Here's our third gallon. Oh man, this thing might take three. It's gonna be quite the flush here. Okay. It's gonna take three, it's probably gonna take more. So let's get this thing outside. A lot of this is gonna drain down and then we'll have to refill it. But yeah, it's still looking really nasty and here's the nasty coolant on the ground got some cleanup to do but before we go outside and work on the lightning and the heat i got to show you guys my new table so many of you give me crap for working on stuff on the ground so my friend steve came by and he helped me build this and he was definitely the brains of the operation he's built quite a few of these but i picked up the materials in the back of the lightning so i'm definitely using it for pickup truck stuff and this thing is an absolute beast. We built it in one night. It is two three quarter inch pieces of plywood glued together. It's three by eight. I stained it in dark walnut. It is very, very sturdy, very strong. And I'm gonna add a stainless steel top and a vise as well. So now I have a table for all of my car parts. And these are some of the parts that are going on the Lightning. And of course, they came from my friends at rockauto.com. And if you guys have not bought car parts on rockauto.com, you're missing out on a ton of savings and you're missing out on the coolest website for auto parts ever. So this is like the internet 25 years ago. Instead of having a crazy fancy site with pop-ups coming and all sorts of madness, they just have a very basic, easy to use site. This is what you want when you just simply wanna buy some car parts. So 2002, 
We got F-150 in here. We pick our engine, supercharged, everything's already in. Very easy, we're ready to buy. And here, check this out, Pitman Arm. I got one of those for the truck. I went with the Moog, that is the best one. They make some very good quality steering parts, $34.79. Let's see how much this is at the local auto parts. So this is their in-house brand, $60. The middle grade is 48 and the value craft is 38. This part is gonna last you like a year or two at most. Very, very cheap parts, or you can get the best of the best for $34.79. And the best part is if you guys go to rockauto.com or click on my link in the video description box and use coupon code LEGIT, you're gonna save an additional 5%. So a big thanks to rockauto.com for continuing to support automotive content creators like myself. Now, let's go outside, it's about 100 degrees and uh, continue to fix this lightning. We got a lot to do. So I got it out here idling. We'll get it up to, well, as close to operating temperature as we can without a thermostat. There's a possibility with it sitting here, it might not ever get up to operating temperature, but we'll let it run for a while. Get this engine nice and warm. Get this coolant circulating. Make sure we don't have any leak here at the top of the radiator hose. We're good, it's under pressure already. A lightning with no blower. So weird. Uh, there's that cleaner. It's foaming up on us. That's when you know it's working. It's cleaning. It's taking a bath in there. The engine's getting clean, the radiator, the heater core, everything. Especially when you're running two of these things through it. So if your cooling system isn't that dirty, you can just run this for about 10, 15 minutes and then flush it out. But in my case, I ran the first bottle for a couple hundred miles, drain that out. Now we're on our second bottle. I've never had to go to three, but we might fill this back up with water and flush it one last time after this next flush. I want to make sure this is all out of there. All right, so it did end up taking about three gallons, and now it's been about 15 minutes. I've had the cap on. I've been revving it up every once in a while, and I don't think it's going to get much warmer than that right there. Maybe it would if I, I mean, it's like 100 degrees outside right now. So I think at this point, the cleaner and the water circulated through the engine enough. Maybe I'll give it just another five minutes or so, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and drain this outside. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Woo! Nasty. It should get better every time. So I'm just going to do these flushes outside and look at this. I think this is worse than the first time. Wow. This might take us like four flushes to get this clean. Okay, so while that one is draining, I'm going to go ahead and replace the coolant tank here because I don't think we're ever going to get it super clean. And this is a cool truck and it should look nice under here. So a normal car, I would spend a little bit of time cleaning it, we just call it a day, but I think this engine bay would look a lot better with it. It was only like 30 bucks, so why not? Okay, got that guy off. Okay, there we go. Yeah, look at this. We're never gonna make this look pretty. It's all black on the inside and just nasty. So, goodbye. This is much better. It's missing another bolt that goes in here. I'll have to go find one. It's pretty solid without it. Oh man, we're doing this again and it looks equally as bad. This is horrible. This is horrible. When is this gonna start to look clear? I can't believe it. Three gallons each time. This is gonna be a lot of fun to recycle, that's for sure. I got a five gallon bucket already filled up and this thing i think i don't know maybe holds six gallons total something like that all right so this is going to be our third bottle of coolant radiator flush and uh this is what we found at the store blue devil not sponsored by any of these guys just all they had so same deal they want you to run it for about 10 minutes until it gets the operating temperature and then flush it out so Come on, Blue Devil, let's do this because this stuff is not looking any better. And this is our third bottle now of some kind of radiator flush. I'm running out of containers to put nasty water into. This thing holds so much. Okay, this is with the Blue Devil. Maybe it's looking a little bit better now. I don't know. I don't know. This is still pretty far off. We're definitely going to have to do this again. This is the longest coolant flush I've ever done. Finally, we have clean water. Oh, this is great. This is great. Off camera, I've done this like a million times, but it's nice and clean now. No more orange stuff. 
And I think I've gone through, I don't know, about 20 gallons of water. We have this here, another one inside, a couple random gallon containers I filled up with this nastiness. And we're finally getting nice, clear water going through. So with that, I am going to install our new thermostat. We'll fill it up with coolant. We have our new bottle here. This is gonna be sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna replace the belts as well. And it's gonna be a lot easier to do that if we can get this fan out of here. There's probably a special tool for this, but I'm just gonna jam a screwdriver in and hope for the best. And okay, that was really easy. Just loosened right up. Okay, there's that one. So we'll spin this fan and fan clutch off of the water pump. I'd like to do an electric fan conversion on this. I think the engine would just sound so much better without this fan blowing. All right, cool. That's out of the way. All right, I don't think I'm gonna sneak that belt by. We're gonna have to take this big bracket off that holds some of the pulleys for the supercharger belt. I think that's the only way to do this. Okay, so I'm taking this gigantic bracket off so I can get to the inside belt. I got the, uh, the belt out, but there's no way we're getting that new one on and routed without being able to see, so goodbye. This is a Ford truck. It's supposed to be easy to work on, but this is just, everything is buried. Honestly, this isn't fun. This isn't fun. Okay, so far working on an LS truck is a million times easier than this. This belt took me like a half hour at least, so not fun, but that one's done. All right, so now we have the block of pulleys and the blower tensioner that we can put back on. Go to your home. There you go. All right. So you can see this blower belt, it's got some cracks in it. So it's getting a little brittle. Definitely something we wanna do right now. And here's the new one, a Gates RPM belt. So this should hold up pretty well. Made in the USA. All right, this one is a tad easier, especially with the uh, fan out of the way. Well, you win some, you lose some. When you're ordering a belt with a truck that has a different supercharger pulley, you gotta keep that in mind. So I just ordered one for an O2 Lightning. It is too short. So yeah, we're going back with the old belt and I'll have to reorder it, but my mistake, feeling kind of dumb. All right, so it's time to install a thermostat. Just gonna leave the hose on this time. Okay, new seal. I've already cleaned up the housing and the bolts, so we're good there. Click, click, click. A couple more clicks. Click, click, and we are good. New thermostat, all right. Okay, so we're back in the shop. Everything is put back together, and we have nice, clean coolant. So I'm gonna let this kind of bubble down while we do all the other repairs, and then I'll have to top it up in a little bit. So let's move on. Let me tell you, it is so nice to have an air-conditioned shop. And funny story, when I went to go look at this place, I had no idea it was air-conditioned. And after seeing it, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take it. Like, this is, this is great, this is perfect. And then I came back the next day because the owner could come in and he was gonna show me some stuff. And he's like, oh yeah, let me show you how to turn on the air conditioning. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. This has air conditioning? And he's like, yeah, and it works really well. And it does, guys. It is so nice in here. I don't keep it on all the time because it's kind of expensive to cool the whole place down, but air conditioning, phenomenal, phenomenal thing to have in a garage, let me tell you. So it was an electric impact. I barely use the uh, air hose anymore for anything. All right, let's see. Are we gonna need the old mule kick? I don't think so, I don't think so. Yeah, look at that. Just the old palm hit. That's all you need here. So I'm gonna take all these wheels off, just make it easier to work on stuff, even though we don't really need them off for this. This thing alive, whoa, that thing is alive, yeah, okay. All right, we got bugs, we got bugs. Um, <laughs> we got bugs and these brakes are all pretty much brand new, which 
This thing is just weirdly maintained. Like the brakes and the hardware and everything is like brand spanking new. It looks phenomenal, but they only replaced one shock. Let, let me show you. I don't know if this is the same one. Uh, is this thing alive? Here we go. No? No, oh, it's dead. It's dead. That was the same thing that flew out though, but a different one. That's his brother. Sorry, little buddy. You didn't make it. So the cause of the noise when I was bouncing up and down on the truck was this. A bad shock. The bushing is completely gone. This looks very, very old and it needs to be replaced, but for some reason they just replaced the driver's side rear and the passenger side front but they didn't replace the driver's side front. Very, very odd. And all of this rust looking stuff is just the rust water that was spewing out of the reservoir in the last video. This thing is actually in really good shape for being a Chicago truck. The frame and the undercarriage are in excellent condition. So I much rather have this and replace a bunch of worn out shocks and do some maintenance than the other way around having a rotted out frame and whatnot. That would be no good. The bones of this truck are solid. All right, let's get these shocks going here. I sprayed these down with some PETA training oil yesterday. Let's see. All right, so far so good. And guys, I've been using these Sonic tools now for, I don't know, two months. They're awesome. I'll leave you guys a link and a coupon code, 10% off down below. The ratchets are so nice, so fine tooth. A lot of this stuff is made in Germany. It's just built really well. These guys are great. That thing isn't going anywhere now. Yeah, we can take the nut off. Never mind. this is all stripped out and rusted, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. Or cutting. All right, that should do it. Woo! Don't burn me. All right, <laughs> good deal. Okay, there goes that. All right, cool. Okay, now we just have the lower one. And of course this guy is frozen. So we're gonna clamp these guys on there and hope that we can spin the bolt out. Yep. All right, we got it. That may have been why they didn't do this shock. They couldn't get it out. Very possible. But we got it out. Hang on, I gotta show you guys this because it's happening right now. Uh, it's about 6.30 at night, it just started raining. Look at all the water that's coming into the shop. And it's all coming in right here. See that? It's like a stream. Oh wow, and it's coming in over here too. Oh, this is not cool. Oh, wait a minute, it's coming in over here. The roof is leaking also. Oh, geez. Holy, whoa. This is nuts. Look at this. Woo, I'm so sorry, TA. This is gonna be your first wash in like 18 months. Wow. Stuff's getting flooded, that is for sure. Close. All right. Okay. All right, dealing with that problem is for another day. I'm just hoping the whole entire shop doesn't get flooded because it is creeping in. It is definitely creeping in. Well, I guess we have a pretty serious storm going on right now, but that is not going to stop me from completing this lightning. We can worry about water leaks and property damage another time. We have parts to install. Bilsteins in this case. So I'm replacing all the shocks with some nice Bilsteins. It's gonna make this lightning handle even better. This thing handles really well for a pickup truck. I'm super impressed so far. It's actually a lot of fun to drive. All right, now it's time for me to pretend that I work out. Oh yeah, no problem, this is so easy. Oh, I should probably have the bolt ready, yeah. Let's get the bolt ready. Where are you, bolts? Okay, here we go. Whew. Okay, that's difficult. <laughs> that is difficult. I don't work out, so I really need to. This is bad. Uh, just turned 37. 
but I feel, I feel like I'm 25. Yeah, okay, there we go, piece of cake. The storm is getting worse. Water is definitely getting all the way in my shop. This better stay. Okay, all right, now we use the old punch trick to line this up perfectly. And then this will punch our punch right out. Look at that. Sweet. Goodbye glove. Okay, there's our nut. All right, new glove. Let's see how long this guy lasts us. If you guys have any recommendations for gloves that don't rip every two seconds, leave them down below. I spent like $35 on a box of these gloves and, and they're horrible. All right, cool. One down. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. The side was already done, so this nut came right off. It's like brand new. They must have just replaced this guy. Thank you. I mean, I'm gonna replace it again anyway, but it's nice the hardware is coming off. Nice. Let's see, is it stuck in the sleeve? Oh, very good. It's gonna come right out. There we go. All right. What brand is this? Yeah, it's made in the USA, but it doesn't say anything on there. I'm sure it's not a bad shock, but we got Bilstein's. All right, so I've got both of the rears complete. And I gotta say, these Bilstein's always look so good. They have the color combination on point. And this is not looking so good. This water just keeps on creeping and this storm is not giving up. And we aren't giving up on fixing stuff on this Lightning. Actually, this is more of a maintenance item, but while we're back here, let's swap out some diff fluid. Okay, so this is the fill. All right, good, we're not getting anything. Now, this differential does not have a drain plug. You actually have to remove the rear cover. It's sealed with an RTV, and then you have to clean this all up and put it back on. It takes a little bit of time, and it's unnecessary if this isn't leaking, so let me show you what I do. So I use one of these guys. It's a little pneumatic fluid extractor, and you can get manual ones as well if you don't have shop air. And then you just take the hose, and you just snake it in here. Okay, so we can get this guy to go all the way down into the bottom and then we're gonna suck the fluid out there we go and this is gonna suck all the fluid out every last little bit of it you can sink this line in it'll get it all and then just keep an eye on this if it gets too full it'll start to spit out there but we'll let this go maybe it takes like 10 minutes or so and we don't have to mess with that rear cover you want to know what's fun? It's spilling diff fluid all over the place. I was taking a little cap there off and I dropped the bottle. One thing that's kind of annoying when you have one of these little guys is you have to drain it out every few minutes. But anyway, here we go. This stuff was a little dirty, I must say. But we'll get some new fluid in there and the differential was working good. It'll definitely leave two stripes down the road, that's for sure. So the posi unit is functioning. I've got all the diff fluid sucked out, but before we start filling it back up, I'm gonna use a bottle of this Amsoil Slip Lock. So I was getting a little bit of chattering in parking lots and making tight turns from the rear end here, and that could mean that it's low on the additive. So maybe whoever swapped it out last didn't use any of this. Um, the fluid I'm using does have some of the additive in there, so if it's been properly maintained, this isn't necessary, but it never hurts, and I like using this pretty much in all performance cars that have a limited slip. So I'll leave a link down below where you can get Amsoil for 25% off. And and that's through me. I'm an Amsoil dealer. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and squirt this in there. Ooh, yeah. I hope you guys can hear that. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay, we're good there. These squeeze bottles are really nice. So I've already put a couple of these in there. This differential takes quite a bit of fluid. Okay, yeah. Whoa, it is coming out. All right, all right, all right. So then we just put the plug back in and we're done. So you guys should definitely be doing your differential services at home. Some shops will charge a couple hundred dollars for this and you can get it done for like 
maybe 30, 40 bucks in material at most using the best stuff, using synthetic fluid and whatnot. And in some cases, you don't even have to take off the rear cover. Okay, we're moving on to the front shocks. This is the old one. Oh, we're gonna have to cut this off too, aren't we? Yeah, this whole thing is just spinning. It's just a big ball of rust. Well, let's cut it off. Okay, this one's a lot harder to get to. Kind of at a weird angle here, so I'm just trying to cut right through the nut so we can just break the nut right off. Almost. All right. Okay, pretty much ground this down to nothing. This has to come now. There we go. Okay, goodbye. Yeah. Nice destruction right there. Ooh, this is hot. Ooh, this is hot. All right, all right. Okay, so that side took about 15 minutes to cut that off. So let's compare that to this side here where someone was nice enough to already replace this strut for me. So this hardware is so nice and easy. Look at that. I did it live. That's it. All right. Cool. And now we have the problem side, but shouldn't have an issue with these. I've been soaking them for a little while. All right. Okay. There we go. This one is gone. So these fronts are a lot easier. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and slide this one up. I just gotta muscle this guy and hold it. Stay. Oh, no. There we go. Woo! Spin jack would be nice. I have one of those too. It's just not here, along with half of the other things I need to work on cars. Okay. Oh man, this one was horrible. Just horrible. Suck it in. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right. With these fronts, you can't just zip them down. You have to hold it with a T40, then you can turn the nut and tighten it down. And you don't have to go too crazy here and smush out all of the rubber. That's about good right there. It's not going anywhere, trust me. There we go. All right, so we have a new Bilstein on the front right and on the front left, which means we are done with the shocks. All right, so I just wanted to fill this up with some water. I've been hearing it bubble down the whole time we're doing our other repairs. All right, cool. This looks so much better. I'm so glad I replaced this reservoir for like, I don't know, 30, 35 dollars and we have flushed everything out. And this truck never overheated or anything, so I don't expect to see any difference in cooling performance, but it's definitely nice to know we're up to date on maintenance with the coolant. You know what, while we're in here, might as well give this mass airflow sensor a cleaning. You guys have seen me do this on pretty much any new car that I buy, because it's so easy to do, and it can prevent a failure or at least a check engine light coming on. People replace mass airflow sensors all the time and sometimes you can just clean them out. It's really easy. Just get yourself some mass airflow sensor cleaner and then you're just spraying it on. Make sure to get the little elements in here. And that's about it. We'll let this guy dry and then put it right back. All right guys, it's like three and a half hours later and this will not let up at all. This is a really, really bad storm. Wow. It's hard to see, but the tire on that 4Runner is just completely underwater. Oh, man. I got a call from the house that the basement isn't flooding, but the sump pump isn't working. So 
I have to go back home right now and check on that and try and figure out what's going on. And my wife told me that all the streets are flooded. The neighbors are probably getting water in their basement. I may get water in my basement. So I don't want to disable the truck anymore because I may need it for pickup truck type stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up, drive it back home and do what I got to do. So in the next lightning video, we will finish the rest of the truck. It will be mechanically perfect. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you're new, cross your fingers, I don't have any water in my basement, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.